Two chains, but I got me like one. Um, check this out. Charm Physique reached out to Nick Wright Bodybuilding, the best YouTube channel for fitness and bodybuilding on YouTube. Check it out. They reached out to me on the NWB page, and they sent me this nifty little surprise in the mail today. Bam! Custom made for NWB. And look at this. Look at this. It is a laser etched dog tag. Laser etched meaning it's actually etched in there. It's not just like a decal. It's not just painted on. You can't scuff it off. It's, it's in there. It's in the metal. One side's that. The other side's the, the actual NWB Strong logo that you find on all your hoodies and t-shirts and whatnot. Check this out. How would you guys like these? Because I can actually get a ton of these made and start distributing these if you want. We can also get a bunch of different logos on this, but this is pretty cool. This is Charm Physique reaching out to NWB and showing support. We got jewelry now! Look at that though, NWB strong. Both sides. So what's happening, La Familia? Nick Wright, Nick Wright Bodybuilding. Q&A gone completely wrong. First and foremost, before I even begin this Q&A, my hair. Everybody was asking me in the last video, Nick, what happened to your hair? Because clearly, it's not looking pretty right now. Basically, I got so sick and tired of having it that I was just like, F it, I'm just going to buzz the whole thing, which I did. I never buzzed my head just because I don't really think I have the head for it, but I buzzed it. And then my sideburns, I started to fade myself, which is never a good idea. I have a lot of friends who are barbers. But I got a little too comfortable, a little bit too confident. Started to shave it. Um, did well on one side, the other side, like I just didn't fade it correctly at all. And uh, you know how that goes. Once you, once you misfade it, there's no fixing it. You're just going to keep riding up your head until finally your whole head's bald. So I was like, forget it. Buzzed. Just took them right off. Fortunately for me, my hair grows back really, really, really fast. So I'm not really too worried about it. In a couple of weeks, they'll be back in. My hair will be back out. And I'll go get it professionally cut, make it look all pretty nice again, just in time for the Arnold Classic to meet all of you fine people. But in the meantime for this video, I'm going to distract you all from the mess on my head with NWB. Thank you very much. And uh, we're going to commence this Q&A. Now, this is the funniest thing in the world because the other day, I put a post on NWB and I said, all right, let's have a fun Q&A. Make it nasty. Ask me anything interesting. Something juicy. Ask me the intimate details, the questions that have nothing to do with fitness. And I'm going to put them on Nick Wright Live, my blogging slash hilarious ranting channel that offends so many people, apparently. You guys all hit me with only bodybuilding and fitness questions. So I was like, all right, I might as well just put this on Nick Wright Bodybuilding since it's all bodybuilding questions. But that said, I'm just putting it out there. Now's your chance. Go to Nick Wright Live, subscribe to that channel, and next thing you see me post a status like that, we have a Nick Wright Live Q&A. Go, ask me anything. Hit me with questions that are fun and interesting, questions that aren't fitness related. Not that there's anything wrong with fitness related questions. John Lee asks, can you drink coffee every day as a replacement for pre-workouts while you're cycling off it? Or will my tolerance still go up seeing as though coffee has caffeine in it? So in other words, pre-workouts, they have a lot of caffeine, they have a lot of stimulants in them. You're supposed to cycle off them periodically. I never really do, but you're supposed to cycle off them just to give yourself time to kind of recuperate. You'll notice that the longer you take pre-workouts for, the more tolerance you, you gain. You start not feeling them as well. So you're supposed to stop taking them for a little bit, allow your tolerance to kind of decrease a little bit. So when you begin taking them, it hits you nice and hard again. Will having coffee during your offloads affect this? It depends on you and your tolerance for caffeine. Pre-workouts have a lot more caffeine in them than a cup of coffee does. Okay, uh, N0 Extreme, for example, has about 200 milligrams of caffeine in it, actually about 150 milligrams of caffeine. Whereas an average cup of coffee will have maybe like 60-ish grams, 60 to 80 grams on average. On top of that, your pre-workouts also have a bunch of other stimulants as well, strong stimulants. So if your tolerance allows for it, you can actually take a little, you can drink coffee during the time in which you're taking a break from your pre-workouts and it'll actually be beneficial. What it'll do is it'll still allow some caffeine into your system because it's never a good thing to go cold turkey off of caffeine. It can actually increase anxiety and a couple of other symptoms as well. It's not good. So you want to always keep a little bit of caffeine in there after you've been having a lot of caffeine consistently. So coffee will do that, which is a good thing. 
On top of that, coffee, again, is much less dose of caffeine, and it doesn't have as many other stimulants as your pre-workouts tend to have. So it's not going to be hitting you as hard as it is. So in other words, it'll still allow your, your tolerance to decrease a lot more, even though you're not completely cutting out caffeine, if your tolerance allows for that. I'm not even going to try to pronounce his name, but he says, what's better, a program that's proven to work, and it works, but is boring, and you find it not fun, or a self-made program that may not be the best for you, but you find it enjoyable. And to quote my man, Kyle Hunt, my contest prep coach, the best, most efficient workout is the one in which you enjoy the most. So, man whose name I'm not gonna pronounce, stick to whatever workout routine you enjoy doing. Because honestly, if it's not enjoyable, you're gonna hate it, and you're not gonna put the most into it most likely. It's just gonna suck. So yes, go with whatever workout program you love the most. This is why I'm still on that five day bro split. Fabian Garcia. Is it possible to build muscle and lower body fat percentage at the same damn time? No, you can only bulk or cut. Now in the very beginning of a cut, you may still possibly be making some light gains. Just like in the beginning of a bulk, you may, um, may be able to burn off fat for a little bit more too, you know, especially if you've been dieting, you just start bulking, it'll act as a refeed, uh, you replenish some leptin levels, you may actually be able to burn a little bit more fat at the very beginning. But it's all gonna be light and it's only gonna be in the beginning stage. Once you get going on either one, no. You need a calorie surplus to gain, you need a calorie deficit to cut. Obviously, you can't do both at the same time, so you can only cut or bulk. You're good, man. Just get your protein intake in for the day and you will be golden. You'll keep making them gains. Renee Franco, how do you deal with stretch marks from muscle growth? I don't know, I don't have any. My mom has really good skin genetically, and actually I guess my dad does too, and they pass it on to me, so I've never had a stretch mark in my entire life, and honestly, I know I shouldn't be, because I know a lot of you are trying to figure out how to get rid of your stretch marks, but I'm a little jealous of you guys, because like, I just want one, like I see all the big guys with stretch marks, I just want to feel like I'm big. I want to see a stretch mark or two right here, just so I can know I'm big. Costas Cambos asks, are fish oil omega-3 will help me produce at least a 5% testosterone increase. What I got from that is, will omega-3s pop up your testosterone by 5%? To that, I say omega-3s do overall help to support healthy testosterone. Whether or not they bump it up 5% is completely irrelevant. It's so irrelevant that honestly, if a magical fairy came down and said, Nick, I'm gonna either up your testosterone by 5% or decrease it by 5%. Which one do you want? I would just tell her to surprise me because literally decreasing your test by 5% will make as much of a difference as increasing it by 5%. Well, it's totally irrelevant. Remember guys, you need at least 200% increase to even begin to tap on the door of anabolic difference. So don't worry about that. All you need to worry about is taking it consistently and focus on the other benefits that omega-3s have. Um, fat in general, healthy fat in general, will help to support healthy testosterone. So don't worry about the test thing too much on any subject, unless it's steroids. Chase Horton asks, how can people on gear lose fat so much faster than natties? Like 30 week cut versus 10 week cut on gear. Love that question. Great question. So everybody who says, um, you know, the, the, the juiced up, the IFBB pros, the NPC national competitors are doing the same things as natural guys. They just use the, the supplementation advantage. It's really not the same thing because like he stated, a natural pro, a legitimate natural pro will take 30 weeks or more. I mean, that's over six months to cut and they're going from already really lean. They never get heavy in their off season. They're already really lean, like 9% body fat and they take half a year or more to get down to really shred it. Whereas these IFBB pros can go from almost obese in the off season to invisible skin in like a matter of 12 weeks. It doesn't make sense. But it's because of the drugs they take. Um, strong diuretics and, and basically things like T3, T4, uh, Clen, I'm sure you've all heard of Clen, uh, GH, those will all help you get really, really, really shredded. And you really don't even have to worry about diets so much when you're eating them either. As far as eating lean goes. What is the best macros to aim for while bulking and cutting and why? That is gonna come down to your exact body type, your exact level of activity, where you're at as far as body composition goes, what your goal is, how far out you are. Basically what I'm trying to say is it's different for everybody and it really depends on the individual. What I recommend is contacting Kyle Hunt at huntfitness.com. He did my contest prep, he's great, and he's one of the most affordable coaches I've ever seen in the industry because coaches are getting expensive now, it's ridiculous. What is your favorite and least favorite exercise you do? Man, 
Hey, calves and abs. I don't know specific exercises. I only do exercises that I like, honestly. You know, I was watching um, Andrea Valdez's video, one of her recent videos, and I saw her going over, uh, I guess, a regimen that 3D Muscle Journey made for her, and um, she she was talking about how she didn't like glute bridges, I think, and she wanted to talk to her coach about switching with something different. And, you know, I totally respect that. I understand, you know, what the coaches are trying to do, and I understand why she's following that, and that's that's great. She's, you know, she wants to be spot on, precise, and, and successful in her prep. So I, I get that. But me personally, I was just thinking the whole time watching it, I could never do that. I could never go by somebody's regimen, especially if it was an exercise I didn't like. I wouldn't even ask my coach. I would just be like, no, <laughs> we're not doing these today. I'm doing this today, and then I'm going to tell my coach that I want to start doing these. And in which case, a good coach would then talk to you about it, and he'd understand that neck you're just having a, a terrible twos rant you need to calm down before I smack you up and then we discuss what exercise options we could throw in there instead what do you prefer lucky charms or Captain Crunch oh man definitely Captain Crunch what was your favorite moment in Dragon Ball Z I have never watched Dragon Ball Z in my life Scott Herman who's a good friend of mine loves Dragon Ball Z um, and I'm just lost every time I talk to him and, and he'll show me like some new relics and stuff that he got some new like Dragon Ball Z pieces and um, I mean they look cool, but I don't know anything about Dragon Ball Z So I just sit there. I'm like wow <laughs> If you could change one thing about yourself, what would it be? Oh man only one? Oh God, um, man that would either have to be a chin. I would either want a chin. See people can be crap on my jaw my jaw is actually not that bad. I got a decent jaw. It's my chin. I have no chin. And it creates the illusion that my entire jaw is bad. I mean, I don't have a pronounced jaw by any means. So my jaw is actually decent. You can see it in some photos. My chin, though, I don't have a chin. I would definitely change that. I would want my shoulders much wider. Like skeletal frame, my shoulders to be much wider. Taller. Wouldn't mind being a little bit taller. Um, probably the main thing that would change as of right now. Oh, and bigger hands. I wouldn't mind bigger hands. Pain in the ass when trying to lift weights. Ryan M says, New England shout out! Yeah! New England, Northeast Coast, I rep it hard. What are the best six pack exercises for balking? Watch my eight pack workout. Type in Nick Wright eight pack workout. Or, or like abs workout. I don't know what it's called. Just type in Nick Wright abs workout and you'll see it. There's one video that's really old and there's another video that's newer. You can watch both of them. How do you plan to expand NWB? Just continue the YouTube series? Do you have something specific in mind? Well, yes, the YouTube series will continue. I'm constantly networking behind the scenes business-wise, linking, networking with other business people. I'm making some moves that I don't see a lot of YouTubers making. And of course, there's some much, much bigger plans that are that are in the near future. Possibilities, they're not set in stone, but they're, they're likely. I don't want to say anything yet because they're not set in stone. So the only hint I'll give you is Twin Muscle Workout is the only YouTube channel that beat me to it so far. Um, that's the only hint I'm going to give you. Other than that, you'll see NWB excel. NWB's been on top of the game regardless of not having the most subscribers and it's going to stay on top of the game. So that's it guys. If you like the bodybuilding Q&As, of course, let me know and we can do a little bit more. Like I said, be on the lookout. The next time I post Q&A timer, ask me anything on Nick Wright Bodybuilding and I tell you it's for Nick Wright Live. Let's come with some creative, clever questions. Converse just sent me more shoes. Converse is now hooking me up with footwear because they wanted to show NWB some support, which I am blown away by. Insanely good before, so check this out. Check out the newest editions. They just sent me this yesterday.